It could be the girl next door, the team captain, the cashier at your favorite coffee shop, the boy down the street, a friend's child, a child's friend. One out of every five people in this world is an adolescent, and so many of them face serious health issues. It's no different here in Canada. Our track record for taking care of the health of our youth is poor, especially when it comes to their emotional well-being. We know that at any given time, 15% of our young people actually qualify for a psychiatric diagnosis. We also know that the majority of them don't get treated for that, and for us, that's a real issue. Beyond actual mental health problems, though, there's that whole area where children have issues, they have problems, they have mental health issues. And that's something that I think we need to pay attention to because it's probably more than the 15%. They are our children. These are our, uh, our neighbors' children. They are our uh, nieces and nephews and the people, the young people around us with as many as one in three suffering. They are all around us. These kids all have something in common. They are trying to grow up in the face of the most overwhelming challenges. Some we may understand, some we may not. But one thing we can understand is that they are trying to survive their teenage years. And that is never easy. I was smoking marijuana, drinking, skipping lots of class, not going to school at all, right? Really uh, being at school, just hanging out with the wrong people, uh, getting into fights, stuff like that. And um, my grades were not where they needed to be as, as well, right? A lot of times the kids that we see are the ones that don't have the family support at home. And I don't mean that in a negative manner. I, sometimes parents are so occupied working two or three jobs that they don't always have the time to put in with their kids. And those are the ones that we find sometimes will come back with the larger issues. Isolation, being cut off physically, socially, or culturally is a terrible thing for any young person. But the worst kind of isolation must be the suffering that happens inside. I was suicidal and very hopeless about life, about my ability to handle life. I thought there was something just wrong with me. I couldn't do it like everybody else. The, the sad thing about it is that, at least I feel personally, that my, my high school teachers uh, at the beginning of my high school career didn't care, didn't care at all. I don't listen to people's advice when I don't believe they care about me. And you know, children and teenagers are just the same. The people they listen to are the people that they know care about them. The wonderful thing about young people is that while they are very vulnerable to the world around them, they are even more resilient. They just need to connect with people who really care about them. They have courage, they need hope, and someone to help them find it. We want to become that someone. Helping youth is really important because it's starting early in both preventive strategies and in treatment strategies actually that is going to actually pay us all back as a society for the longest duration of time. So the earlier we start in paying attention to wellness issues or health issues, the longer we'll have to benefit from the results of that intervention. The important thing actually is to identify organizations that we can work with, uh, identify some of the challenges and the needs that they're facing, and then think about how it is that we can best use the skills and knowledge and capabilities that we might have at this organization to help them meet some of their goals. We're not thinking we're experts here. We're trying to pull together the experts and collaborate and connect folks together and so that we can make a difference. Basically, St. Albans Boys and Girls Club saved my, my life basically because Without this studio opening though, the motivation for me to finish high school and stuff like that would not have been there at, at all. Boys and girls clubs, they're very important because we are a safe haven. Um, so kids can feel whatever's going on outside, it stays outside. Once you come through our doors, there's no judgment, there's no anything. Everyone can be free to be who they are in themselves. Secondly, it's important because we believe in the development of the child and youth. So it's not just hop into a room and do whatever we want. There's always an educational component to everything we do, even though the kids may not think so. The education that we can give outside of school I think is a big thing because the schools have a curriculum to follow and you know mental health I don't think is on the curriculum. When I do look back to how I was coping and feeling 10 years ago versus now I really uh, do realize how far I've come and that I can continue until I feel 100% again. The program at its core is really about engaging youth. 
they need room to find out who they are. Um, because developmentally, that's their role at this point in their lives. But they can only do that with the security of knowing that they are loved, but most importantly, that they belong. The AstraZeneca Young Health Program is our global commitment to helping young people who feel disconnected get the support they need. We want to protect their health now and improve their quality of life in the future. If we can help make their lives better and get them when they're in many respects forming who they are, there's just a tremendous impact that we can have. I know that we're going to be able to count on everybody to get involved, to bring the enthusiasm that they've brought to just about everything we've always done. We cannot afford in this country to lose a single child or youth. We're here to help, so let's help. Our focus is on strengthening the emotional well-being of vulnerable adolescents. At AstraZeneca, we believe we can make a difference, and we have the courage of our convictions.